So that right there is 16 100 watt solar panels, which means we should get 1.6 kilowatts per hour if they're getting optimal sun and they're producing it at an optimal rate. We have been running off of that system for about nine or ten months now. And it has been enough to run our deep freeze, our refrigerator, and a few more household appliances. We do have to supplement it from time to time with our generator. Christian just clipping all the zip ties off of the positive and negative leads off of these solar panels. Christian's putting the finishing touches on our solar array. Set up and put into place. And at least uh, tack in. Now we're going around and adding all the extra screws. All right, Christian's about to plug in the first complete array into the charger. Forty-eight volt battery pack. We stripped that battery pack down to four, and it's still on that inverter running everything we need inside. We're gonna get this system up and running, and then we'll transition those four so that we'll have three sets of forty-eight volt batteries. So, getting real close now. Finishing touches our, on our power inverter. Solar controllers in. Solar control. Our solar panels are charging. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's 65 volts. It's 3.5 amps. It was up at about 10 amps earlier. When the sun yeah, was it good. A little bit of overcast now, though. Yeah. It's not that bad for it being overcast. Now. The little gray box to the right there, that is a solar controller. That is where your solar panel power will come into and it will turn it into a voltage and amperage that is usable to charge the batteries. Now the solar controller does not, it hooks directly to the battery bank itself. Now that is 12, 12 volt batteries. I have sets of four linked together to make 48 volt batteries. So in essence, I have three 48 volt batteries here. My solar controller is set up. Now it could have been 12, 24, 48. I think there's a 72 the uh, volt option on it so that whatever voltage I needed uh, that, I, that my controller could be set to charge whatever size my battery bank was. Now that big old chunky thing right there that is the inverter and what that does is it serves in two ways. One it converts the battery power, the DC, into AC so that I can use it with my appliances. It also allows for you to bring in 220 power so that the 220 uh, comes out through the inverter and converts it to DC to charge uh, the battery banks. 
So the battery bank feeds it to make AC, and then you can feed it AC to charge the batteries. You see that big cord there that's coming out by the solar controller? That one runs over to my generator where I have it plugged into the 220. And I have to run this generator on cloudy days. I'll have to run it for an hour or two. If, uh, if I'm going to be doing like any serious microwaving or something like that, and I just don't want to drain down my batteries, uh, I might crank it. But uh, as a general rule, between the solar power income and an hour or so with the generator uh, every couple of days, I have enough power to run my deep freeze, my refrigerator, a fan, Crisea's heating pad, the lights, the microwave, the coffee maker. And uh, that runs pretty proficiently. Now, here's uh, some big caveats to this. If your goal is to, uh, is to be completely off-grid, um, this system would work for you. If you wanted to do welding or you wanted to do use your power tools, power sanders, drop saws, uh, any of your AC tools for woodworking or metalwork, anything like that, you will need extra power. You could survive off of this power system here but as far as doing commerce or doing uh, industrial type work, you're going to fall short every time. And if you wanted to get in a situation where you were prepared to completely live off grid, it might be very advisable for you to start on grid with an excess amount of power until you get your whole system set up. That's not what we did. We, uh, we came in and the only power we've ever had here is is the solar power system uh, with the backup generator. You can see that right there. The system has been up for about two weeks now. And every day the batteries get to absolute full charge. And then usually by morning, we still have charge. So without doubt, we are absolutely, completely off-grid and sustainable with our current power usage. About 8 kilowatts to distribute through all of our appliances in a 24-hour period. And if the batteries are completely full charged and this battery bank should probably be twice maybe three times the size of, of what it is right now and for you to have a good solid backup power system in case anything went wrong but with these three 48 volt uh battery packs that i got set up if i had no solar no generator and I was just running my refrigerator, my deep freeze, and maybe a couple of other little appliances. I can run for about 36 hours if I start from full before my inverter starts to shut down and says, hey, I cannot draw any more power from these batteries without damaging the batteries. That is another good thing about the solar controller and the inverter is they are both to design designed to protect the integrity of the batteries you overcharge a battery you'll boil it out it causes problems um if you try to draw more power from the batteries than you should um you end up just killing them and causing dead cells and all, all kinds of stuff so it's, we got a lot of safety measures set up to protect our, uh, our battery banks. And we had the solar coming in to help charge them. It is 
I have been happy with the system and how it works, and most of it is jerry-rigged because the house, the cabin, isn't exactly wired for electricity yet. We just run the wire, the electricity in. So there you go, guys. That's a, almost a complete look at our solar system, how simple it was. Um, you're about... About two grand on the battery bank, about three or four grand on the inverter. Uh, I think it was about six hundred for the solar controller, and about twelve hundred for the um, the solar panels. Now you see those gray wires there; those are the solar wires, the solar power wires. You can buy all kinds of different um, wiring harnesses to go to them, pre-made. What I did is I bought a spoil wire, and I bought the connectors. I have more than half of the spool of wire left, and I have probably 90% of the connectors that I bought left. Why? Because buying them in bulk was cheaper than buying what I needed. And... Um, now I have that resource to call on if I ever want to expand it out. That wire and those connectors, they were, uh, they are on the lower side of, of the cost stuff here. Uh, there's, that was my first inverter that we ran here. That was a 12 volt inverter. But, uh, it ran, it running off of 12 volts and not 48 volts was not going to be nearly as efficient as us running off of the 48 volts with the four solar panels running in, in series. So, if you guys got any more questions about this, if I didn't cover everything the way you wanted, just, just ask them down in the comments. about 11 o'clock in January the, the sun is way far on the south horizon but I am still pumping out pretty good right there awesome thank you guys so much for watching please like share subscribe leave a comment down below check out the links in our description for our t-shirts and ways to support our youtubing and homesteading adventures and you've got our patreon our cash app as well as other things in there check it out see you next time bye